from the campus of Arlington High School at the Taz Lodge Gymnasium. ACMI Sports brings you the Arlington Spy Ponders girls basketball. Tonight, your Arlington Spy Ponders will take on the Belmont Marauders. And I'm Rob Anthony. As always, I'm alongside the coach, Scott Zwick. And uh, coach, let me start this way. You and I are both big basketball fans, big sports fans. We, we played the game. Uh, we're always very clear on the stakes. We think every game is an important game. Every game is a must-win game. This is an important game. This is a must-win game for the Spy Potter. It sure is. You know, Bill Parcells, you said this is why you lift all them weights. <laughs> this is why you practice the basketball uh, uh, practices. This is why you do what you do in the offseason. You prepare to try to make the tournament. Spy Ponders win tonight, they're in. It's as simple as that. They hold in their, desti their, their destiny in their hands. The task tonight is immense. It's, it's as, as, as high as it gets. They face a Belmont team that comes in as the number four team in the Boston Herald poll and tied for the middle, Middlesex League title. Who are they, who are they, who are they gonna split with Woburn if both win tonight? They can, so the Spy Ponders can ruin that parade. The first matchup, the Spy Ponders uh, took a hit 73-55. The Marauders, they're deep, they're talented. They're as skilled as Woburn, but they're not as experienced. And the lack of the experience will open the door for an upset and a trip to the dance. And the Spy Ponders are on their home court tonight, and I will point out that uh, dropping 55 on Belmont, this is a team could, that can get scored on. I will also point out that when Woburn came in here, which is ranked number three in the state, uh, Spy Ponders acquitted themselves nicely. Uh, what's it going to take for the Spy Ponders to pull off an upset tonight? The foundation for the Spy Ponders and what they, they fall back on anytime they're in a, in a pressure situation is their superior effort and determination. It's the hallmark of the Amanda Mortelette coach team. It's the hallmark of the Arlington basketball player in general. And that's what they're going to need to, to pull off this upset tonight. They run clean, crisp offense, move the ball to both sides. They continue to do that. Superior effort. That's the key to slaying the dragon tonight. Well, in their last game uh, Tuesday, they beat the, the Ponders beat the Win Winchester Sachem 66-26. It was a lopsided score. It was a lopsided game. Sachems are a young team, had a hard time getting going. Uh, but uh, the Ponders played very, very well in that game, and they seem to be building up to this point and building towards the, uh, the preseason. They shot well. They defended well. They, they played aggressive. So let's look forward, Scott, at the schedule uh, after tonight. The Spy Ponders are uh, nine and eight. They, as you say, they need one more win. They actually have three games to get it, this being their last home game. Three more games to go, but the task is very tough. They're gonna face the number four team in the state tonight in Belmont. Then they, they play in a tournament on Sunday where they face the number 16 team in the state, Revere, who comes in at a 13 and three mark. And then they face the winner of Bill Ricca and Lincoln Sudbury. Bill Ricca is just out of the top 25 at a 13 and five mark. So they need one, but they're all gonna be tough. And some injury notes uh, for the spy ponders. I learned that Diana Wicks had surgery t Tuesday that was considered to be very successful. She will be back with the Ponders on the bench tonight, cheering them on. Uh, Annie Harris was um, had an ankle issue, and uh, the thought was she might be a scratch. Uh, she looks to be toughing it out at the last minute. She will be in uh, the lineup. The Ponders have called up from the JV Aaron Walsh, and she will uh, join the club. Uh, in case some extra numbers are needed. Talk about the, um, the Marauders a little bit, Scott, and, and who to watch for that team. Well, there's a couple players. The point guard, uh, Carly Cristofori, is dynamite at number 12. She can kind of do it all, dribble, drives, pass, shoot. She's kind of the engine that drives with the player that really hurt him last time was uh, 33 
Megan Tan. Megan Tan is quick, gets to the basket. She can shoot a bit, but what Manuel Mortelet said more than anything else, they've got eight players on their roster that are capable of having big games, so it can come from anywhere. So we caught a little bit of the JV game uh, before this, and the JV team for Belmont is certainly a very good team. Uh, and the JVs uh, beat the Arlington Spy Punters. Arlington JVs ended up the season with a 10-8 and eight record. So here are the starting lineups for tonight's game. Uh, the Belmont Marauders are being called out. Starting will be uh, Jenny Call, a senior. Uh, she's a captain. Carly Cristofori, whom Scott talked about, is a captain. She is a senior. Uh, Jess Giorgio is a junior. Greta Prop is a senior. And Megan Tan is a sophomore. They're deep, they have some size. Uh, Jess Giorgio looks to be about 6'3". Uh, for the Spy Ponders, uh, starting will be freshman Claire Ewan, number 20. Freshman Ava Connolly, number four. Now you're seeing Annie Harris, number 24, last minute ad. Good to see Annie uh, out there, and she looks uh, fine as she jumps for the, the high five. That ankle looks fine. We have senior captain Ellie Demery, number 14, and senior captain Abby Ewan, number 15, who was the ACMI player of the game last Tuesday. And now we will honor America with a playing of the national anthem. And let's get ready to play some basketball. And uh, Scott, the Spy Pond is showing a little unity there during the playing of the National Anthem. I, you, I love it. I absolutely love that. Everybody standing in, in, in unison with a, a, a uniform stance, kind of a, a team unity and, and, and belief in our country at the same time. I and mean, I love that stuff. Yeah. Love it. They have some rituals. They do the the little uh, little special. Each player has a special handshake when they uh, come out. And I noticed at the end of that, playing the national anthem, they were holding hands and they showed a little wiggle. So some thought went into it. A little uh, little art as well. A little fun. Uh, that's what uh, high school basketball is all about. It is what it's all about. And we're gonna have some fun tonight. I'll tell you what. What hopefully. Will, will, will be fun for the Spy Ponders is being able to guard uh, big number 13, Jess Giorgio. She is a player with some dynamite post moves and something in this day and age in basketball you just don't see too often. Ponders have done well guarding the post this year. We'll see how that unfolds tonight as Belmont uh, gets the tip and has the first possession. Spy Ponders invading the space of defenders early. Nine and one pass away. And Abby forces the player to the baseline with a miss and gets the rebound, and this will be Spy Ponder's ball as the Belmont Marauders look like they will p uh, pick up in a full-court man-to-man press. It's going to be actually a 2-2-1, two -two which they use to slow teams down, and the Spy Ponders will have to make sure they get it over half court and get right into their offense. Clear drive base. Ellie gets it to, to Ava, who kicks it to Annie. Moving the ball crisply. And Claire Ewan drains one from the elbow. Nice start for the Spy Ponders, 2-0. Claire uses the old adage, touch the ball once. 
If you let, let it go and it comes back to you, fire away. She got it a second time, got a good look, squared her shoulders, and buried a baseline jumper. Great and a travel start. call that time uh, on the Marauders. And this will be Spy Ponder's ball. So both teams are showing presses, but for different reasons. The Belmont press is to slow you down, and the Spy Ponder press is to turn you over. So the Spy Ponders right there really showed effective both ends. They got their press to turn, got to get a turnover and sped themselves up on the press designed to slow them down. Spy Ponder's sharp early. Kicking the ball around the horn. Ava will take a shot. That's a three, and that'll... That'll drain the bottom of the net. Five nothing Spy Ponders. Way downtown bang on that little flare screen that they've wor worked successfully all year long. And we've said all year long that the Spy Ponders get hot from the outside. They're going to be very tough to beat. And right now they're shooting with confidence and a smooth stroke. The Spy Ponders carry over their shooting from Tuesday night. They will be all right tonight. Marauders taking their time. Uh, I believe that could be Krista Foy with the left hand. No. Here's Ava Connolly. She'll have to pull it out. Belmont does a nice job getting back on defense. Spy Ponder is moving the ball side to side early. Dynamite offense. And Claire throws it up off the backboard. No. Here comes Belmont. Belmont looking to run. They can score. That's uh, Megan Tan. Spy Ponder is with tremendous energy early. Oh, and up and in goes uh, Jess Giorgio with a hoop. 5-2 Spy Ponders. Giorgio got herself in the paint. Good position, squared her shoulders, and got a bucket to go. And there's a nice little deflection. The Spy Ponders, before they gave up that deuce, I, I can feel the energy from up here. They are poised and ready to play some basketball tonight. Ava Connolly is uh, facing off against number three. We don't have a three in our program, uh, folks, and it looks like Krista Fiori's not in the ball game, so that could be Krista Fiori. We just don't know. So this is a little 2-3 zone. The Spy Ponders have done a real good job against zones this year. What they did right there is they really didn't identify it early enough, and we're running a man offense against a zone. Look for next time down to get that sharp and squared away with some ball movement side to side. 5-2 Spy Ponders, 5-12 left to go in the first quarter. Teams feeling each other out early. Uh, might have been a travel there, but it is not called. And uh, Marauders will be forced to call a timeout as uh, Megan Tan gets trapped in the corner. Beautiful trap there. Melissa Hart forced to call a timeout. Players did exactly what they're supposed to do when you get a trap like that, and that's mirror the basketball, which means take your hands and have the basketball and follow it with the basketball. Love the Spy Ponder's energy early, Rob. I don't know if, if you can you feel it coming up. It's almost tangible coming off the court. Yeah, and they're t and they're they've hit two out of three shots, and uh, both of them with a lot of confidence. And uh, you know, uh, again, the hot shooting will be the key for the Spy Ponders. Uh, tonight and the early return is is promising. It is promising, and Melissa Hart is going on a two three zone. And you know, Melissa Hart, I'm sure she's done her homework and and scouted the Spy Ponders. But the one thing the Spy Ponders have had a lot of success against, and that's zone defenses. They've moved the ball side to side. They've 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 rotated uh, players a little high low action and gotten wide open looks. Buried them some nights. We've got offensive rebounds the other nights. So it's something they've had success with this year, and we'll see if that continues. So Belmont with the ball down 5-2, five, five minutes to play in the first quarter, 15 seconds on the shot clock. Giorgio really looking, working hard inside. She is getting tremendous position, being very physical. That's going to be a challenge for Claire. Giorgio's going to be a handful tonight. Ponders break the press, and it looks like Abby has a little bit of a lane. She'll, she'll get it back to Ava to Ellie, and they'll set up the offense facing that zone. Again, a little bit of confusion here. This is... this is Looks like a 1-2-2 one, two, two zone, and they're trying to, trying to attack it with a 1-2-2 two, two look on offense. Abby will tee it up from three, trying to beat the shot clock. It does not hit the rim. That'll be a 30-second violation. I'll tell you, Rob, I'm usually pretty good at identifying defenses. You're saying 1-3-1... One, I, I'm thinking it might be a little bit of a matchup. One thing you can do to find out for sure is send somebody through baseline. If somebody follows all the way through, you're looking at a man-to-man -man defense. If they don't, you're looking at a zone. 
Belmont hits number three. I wish I had a name, folks. Uh, she does not convert but does get fouled. She'll go to the charity stripe for two. That's the first uh, foul of the ball game for the Spy Ponders. That's on Abby Ewan. That's her first. You know, Belmont looks tough inside, and right now they're really focused and determined to get the ball inside, whether it's to their super sensational Jess G Gorgio or uh, we saw their number three, as we'll call her for right now. Do we think, Rob, that could be uh, Carly Cristofori? Carly Cristofori is not out there. She's listening to the program with a different number. As uh, Claire gets uh, gets stuffed but comes back down with it and throws it off a of Marauder uh, hand and out of bounds. So the Ponders will have 16 seconds on the shot clock. 5-4 Ponders. 3.46 left to go in the first quarter. Yeah, this is a matchup zone, folks. This is exactly what this is. A matchup zone, which means basically people are going to play man-to-man -man -man in a specific spot of the zone. And there you see stopping and popping is Annie Harris. That was uh, actually Ellie Demarain. Oh. She's, she, she says, I don't care if it's a matchup match zone. When I get an open eight-footer, I'm putting it in the hoop. That's exactly what she did to give the Ponders a 7-4 lead. Oh, and underneath, wide open, nice dish that time from Megan Tan to Greta Pop, and Pop lays it in with her left hand. Tan swishing and dishing right there, beautiful assist. Again, inside where the Marauders is doing all their damage, and the Marauders, after coming out a little bit lackluster, they get a little pep in their step right now. They're pounding the ball inside, and the Spy Ponders are going to have to match that energy and effort. Marauders having no trouble with the Spy Ponders press. And back in again to Prop. Prop throws it up. No, gets her own rebound. Kicks it back out. They'll reinitiate the offense. That's Megan Tan under the, under the hoop. No, Ellie gets the ball, but she gets fouled by, I think they're going to call that against uh, Giorgio. That was Jenny Call that missed the shot. No. Yeah, they are going to call that on uh, Giorgio. That's her first, first of the ball game for Belmont. So a little bit of serendipity there for the Spy Ponders. They give a back door cut and a couple looks at the basket and didn't give up two points. So that's good news. The bad news is right now they're struggling inside. Oh, and right on cue, Annie Harris hits the bunny. 9-6, Ponders. Annie Harris says, you don't know what you're talking about up there in the booth. I can get something going inside. Rough and tough, finishes at the cup. Looks like the Ponders are picking up in a little bit of a zone themselves. No, they're not. Belmont working the ball around uh, with Chris passing themselves. Georgia will turn to the hoop, throw up a hook. No, Claire with a rebound. Spy Ponders have made an adjustment. They're sagging inside to get lots of help. Harris gets to the ball. Uh, the Marauders have other ideas. Here they come. Strong take to the basket, but we'd like to see a couple people touch the ball on offense. Well, and that'll, get, that'll be a uh, traveling call on number three. I think that's a good call, Scott. There was not enough uh, contact on that to, to whistle Harris for the foul. Um, but, the, the, but Belmont can't like that call. No, they can't. They kind of wanted a block call on Abby Ewan, but she was working hard, looking to win a race there. And so I think they kind of made a compromise and called the travel. So Carrie Ann Farina checks into the ball game for Harris. Freena had a good game Tuesday night as well. So this is a 1-2-2 two, two zone, which means you got to get a two-man front and then look to work the ball side to side. Corners are open. There you go. Ava Connolly with an open 15-footer from the base. Puts it up, puts it in. Ava Connolly for two. That's a clinic on how to work a 1-2-2. Two, two. They got the two-man front, reversed the ball, went to the corner, wide open, bang. And that is uh, over and back that was not called. 11-6 by Ponters, minute left to go in the quarter. And Giorgio lays it up and in. Giorgio is just doing a superior job of getting, carving out space down low. She's making her body wide, and it's effective. And that's Megan Tan throws it up, and just like that, the Belmont Marauders pulled it within one, 11 to 10. Belmont is just very tough and strong inside. Doesn't matter whether it's Tan, whether it's Giorgio. They get to the basket, and they make something happen. And Giorgio comes from the back line of that zone with a steal. Uh, she tries to handle the ball, which apparently is not her forte, and is whistled for the double dribble. Uh, and she kind of disgustedly throws the ball away as if to say, well, I tried to dribble, but I can't. 
what I can do is I can power move to the basket and finish near the cup as well as anyone in the league and anyone I've seen this year. She's tremendous. 34 seconds left to go in the corner, 24 on the shot clock. Uh, Claire drives base, no. The Marauders will have the ball. Shot clock off, 26 seconds to get the shot up. Spot Ponder sagging inside, looking for big time help near that 10. Ellie does a nice job cutting Tan off at the base. And Georgia throws the ball out of bounds off of uh, Jane Mahone. So 15 seconds left in the first quarter. Ponders will get another turn. Going to be tough in 15 seconds to navigate this 2-2-1 two, two, pressure, get the ball over half court and get a quality shot off. So what they should look to do is kind of run kind of a 1-4 set here, kind of a fast break off of this. Got to know your time here. 11, 10. Ava will shoot from way downtown. No, four seconds on the shot clock. Two and a half, and it looks like uh, Abby will get whistled for the floor foul, and that'll be side out of bounds for Belmont. Actually, a pretty good foul there by the Spy Ponders. 2.3 seconds less. Let's see if Belmont can try to float something inside. That foul was on Claire, her first of the ball game. Belmont will get the shot off, can't get it to go. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. With the score, Arlington Spy ponders 11 and Belmont Marauders 10. And Scott, uh, nice, nice qu quarter for the punters. We'll take it. Absolutely. High energy, high effort. They got beat a little bit inside. They made a few adjustments, started sagging that defense. The offense looks phenomenal, whether it's against zone or man. The only thing I, the only thing I think Coach Amanda Mortelet's talking about right now is let's see, make make sure every possession we have multiple players touching the basketball. Only time they haven't had success, at least getting a good shot off, is when they make one pass and somebody make, takes a shot. The more people that touch the ball for the spy ponders, usually better things happen. And they seem to be uh, shooting well tonight on the defensive end, protecting the post is. Uh, is is going to be important tonight, and uh, Jess Giorgio has six points in the first quarter alone. She's a monster. It's as simple as that. She's the best post player we've seen all year long. We've seen and we've seen a few quality. We've seen ones. some good ones, yeah. And she she's strong inside. What she does better than anyone we've seen by far is she carves out space before she gets the basketball. She's carving out space, getting someone pinned on her backside, putting her arm up, a nice target to pass to, then getting it, knowing what to do with it. That's not easy to do, and she's phenomenal at it. So the Pi Spy Ponders will start the ball with the ball here in the second quarter, up 11-10. And got him out of that zone. Here's the man-to-man. -man. So the Spy Ponders know what to do with this. I jinxed him. No, I didn't. <laughs> and Ava gets a little open 12-footer, just short. Belmont comes down with it. Ava stopping and popping. That's her shot. Give her that next time. She'll knock it down. Belmont's shot long. Claire comes down with a rebound. This is about her, Claire's fourth rebound of the ballgame. She just gobbles up rebounds. Kiri Ann Farina dishes to Abby. Gets lost in the shuffle. That is called uh, out on the spy ponders. That'll be Belmont ball. So this game has picked up speed a little bit. Both teams looking to run early. Kiri Ann got a little bit ahead of herself. She's pep, pep, jacked and pumped, pep for the game. And sometimes the brain is moving a little bit faster than the body. And that's what happened right there. Long pass by the Marauders. Abby intercepts it. I'll say intercepts it because it looked like a football play. Uh, Abby can't get the ball back in bounds. That'll be Belmont ball. Nice free safety play there by Abby Ewan. She's ready to go tonight. Really trying to build on that successful performance against Winchester. 2-3 zone here by the Spy Ponders, but you see a lot of times they'll run with an out-of-bounds play. That's Megan Tan thought about it. No. Jenny Call will take it, and Jenny Call will hit it. Jenny Call steps in with confidence and a smooth stroke and buries a three, and Belmont's looking spry right now. Spy Ponders have to be careful with the basketball and not give a turnover and easy buckets. And that was Megan Tan, and Belmont's playing with some, with some uh, speed and athleticism right now. You can see the deep roster of Belmont. They're doing this all with Giorgio on the bench, which is disconcerting to Spy Ponder fans. They need, a big, they need a good possession here with several players touching the basketball. Look like uh, Abby got bumped that time by number 31. That's uh, Ella Gagnon, no blood, no foul. And that'll go back 
Belmont's way. So this game's getting a little bit physical. We saw in the Woburn game the officials allowing players to move other players off their spaces. That's what happened right there. No call. So the Spy Pioneers have to get that message and then adjust. If we're allowed to move players off space, it means you have to be tough with the basketball and you can move players off their space as well. Belmont does a nice job handling the Spy Ponders press. Spy Ponders match up. Three takes it from 20. And she swishes down a very nice looking three point play. I believe that's got to be Carly Cristofori. Way downtown. Bang. A nice confident stroke. And right now, Belmont is flexing their muscles, showing why they're the number four team in the state and tied for the lead in the Middlesex division. 18 11, Belmont, 549 to play in the second quarter early, but this is a high leverage bucket for the Spy Ponders. They need a quality shot at the basket. And Abby takes that shot and she uh, draws contact. She'll go to the line for two. Abby shows why she's a senior captain. She understands when her team needs a bucket. Best thing you can do is take the ball to the hole strong and confident trying to make a basket because if you make the basket wonderful, if you get, get fouled, you get two free throws and she's going to take two without anyone guarding her. Abby misses the first. Michelle Mahoney is in the game. The freshman got extended minutes on Tuesday and uh, played very, very well. Matter of fact, she was the Bing Bang Boom Award winner. Awarded that for her hustle as Abby makes the second free throw and the Spy Ponders pulled it within six, 18 to 12. Hopefully Mahoney can give him a little spark right here. The, right now, the Marauders are showing their depth, dexterity, athleticism, and experience as right now Coach Immortalette takes a little bit of a timeout. Spy Ponders finally got off 11, Rob, where they were stuck for a while. Hopefully that can jumpstart their offense. And right on cue, nice rebound there by Michelle uh, Mahoney. And what do you think Amanda Immortalette is talking about in this timeout? I think she's talking about everything's fine. We're okay right now. We just got to be a little bit uh, stronger with the basketball, crisp and clean on offense and understand that if it's physical play out there, we have to respond physically to it. They know how to do it. They did it in the Woburn game. So, but, you know, sometimes you're a young team, you got some young players, they got to be reminded, they got to be physical. And, you know, you said Mahoney uh, was the Big Bang Boom Award winner last game. She played phenomenal. And so she doesn't have a tall task ahead of her. It's just play with effort and energy. We're up and down, be strong with the basketball, get a couple of rebounds, move it on offense. And so she can provide a nice little spark here. And sometimes a little fresh blood, new blood in the season can really spark a club. So it's 18 to 12, uh, Belmont 528 to go in the first half. And it's already evident there's not gonna be a lot of margin for error for the Spy Ponders tonight. This Belmont team uh, knows how to play basketball. Oh, they do. They know what they're doing out there. They're well coached. They're skilled. They're big. It's the, it's the whole package. Ellie picks up her dribble, finds Annie Harris to Michelle Mahoney to Claire. Claire that time draws a foul from Ella Ganyan. That'll be the third foul of the half for Belmont. What I like there with Claire is that she got fouled, but she didn't lose control of the basketball. That sends a signal to me that this team is now ready to play physical basketball. And they find Ellie for a wide open three. Ooh, just long. Fight for the ball. Going up high for it is number 32, Jane Mahone. Jane Mahone with a monster rebound there. Did a nice job of pulling it away. One dribble away to clear herself and then gave it to somebody that could dribble the basketball. Little Leonard had it scoop, scoop oh. shot. No, Belmont gets it back. That's Christopher. He thought about it. No, they kick it around the horn. Back to Christopher. Gagnon with an astonishing display of effort right there. And, a, and one by... Let's just call her Christopher. I mean, Christ that's who it's got to be. Christopher, it's got to be. Right? It's got to be. It's got to be. be. If we're wrong, we're wrong. But we're going to go with Christopher. Christopher is kind of the engine that drives this team. She can dribble the basketball, get to the get to the cup, and there you see her finishing through contact. I don't know, Rob. I, I got to tell you, this Belmont team is dynamite. This is an, this is a, this. They're the real deal. So. Uh, folks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call something, and please don't tell anybody if you're watching this on YouTube. Don't tell anybody for Woburn, but uh, I think the uh, Woburn Tanners are going to have their hands full against this Belmont team if they play them again. As Abby Ewan goes up and 
gets the hoop and the harm. Nice play by Abby. Abby is showing senior leadership right now. She's playing physical. That time she gets the contact and the basket and is awarded with a free throw. And right when I'm saying the spy pond is saying, singing the praises of Belmont, uh, uh, Abby says, hey, whoa, don't forget about us here. And that's Abby's fourth point of the ball game, and the Spy Ponders pulled it within six. They're down 21-15 with 4.20 to go in the first half as Christofori starts the offense off to the left, and no Annie Harris with a big rebound to Ava. And what they're doing with Ava is what a few teams are doing now. They're picking her up full court and not letting her dribble uh, uncontested up the court, and it's giving the Spy Ponders some trouble. Here's a little flex action. So you look to cut through and then the pop out. Cut through. Annie will take it all the way to the hoop. Throw it up with her left hand. Nice take by Annie Harris. Spy Ponders are playing physical basketball right now. They are really, look at Claire battling down low. Belmont, no, Ava gets the ball. Put Spy Ponders down four. They can pull it within two with a good possession or one with a three. Run your offense here. Get a good shot. Cut through and pop outs. Working the right side of the floor. That's Abby with the ball. She drives to the base. Finds Ava. Christopher is in the way. She'll bring it down. Go one on three. Throw it over the hoop. Michelle comes down with it. And knocks it out of bounds. Good hustle by Michelle Mahoney. Great hustle by Mahoney. Claire with a, with a clinic on how to defend someone. Dribble driving to the basket coast to coast. Put two hands straight up in the air. Followed the player and made her shoot over for about seven feet. A clinic. And that's Giorgio back in the ball game. She'll kick it back to Chris Fori. Thinks about it. She'll drive to the left-hand side. Stops and pops from about 18. Just short. Ava with the ball. And that'll be a that'll be a jump ball call. Look like kind of wild wolves on the Serengeti going after a, a bone there. They sure are. It's a physical game, and everyone, they're getting at it, both teams right now. This is this is impressive response by the Spy Ponders. i got to be honest, folks. This Belmont team was so impressive the last six or seven minutes. I was wondering if this game was going to get out of hand. Not only does he not get out of hand, the Spy Ponders are ready to go. And right on cue, Claire Ewan makes uh, another basket. That is four points for Claire. Spy Ponders pulled it within two. 21-19, 2.28 to go in the first half. Appropriate Claire puts the ball in the basket because she kind of started this with their physical play down low with Giorgio. She's pushing her around. She's not getting intimidated. Matter of fact, she's the one initiating contact right now. Krista Fori launches it from way downtown, and that rebound will be off Giorgio. And the Spy Ponders will have a chance to tie the game with a two or go ahead with a three. If, I mean, it's, it's really astonishing that Claire Ewan, a freshman, is able to – to ha to outmuscle for a period of time right now, Giorgio, a junior, experienced basketball player, rough and tough, and you know, the, the, and right now Georgia is going to take a seat and and and, and well, oh, so she's still in the ball game, and, and Claire's right, you know, still right on her right now. This is impressive. Christopher takes a seat, and uh, Tan will handle the ball for the Belmont Marauders to initiate the offense. Nice little juke that time by Belmont, but they can't get the layup to go. Here come the Ponders, 21-19, minute 49 left to go in the half. The Spy Ponders have started to dominate the boards now with some superior effort, and... Abby drives the base, no. Belmont comes down with it. Good job retreating back on defense by the Spy Ponders, matching up, and Belmont will have to play five on five. Oh, Good another. rebound by El Ellie. And that'll be a jump ball that's forced that time uh, by number 14, uh, Kylie Roan. And that should be Belmont ball, and it is. Yeah, great job on the boards. The Spy Ponders have really turned it around down low with boxing out and jumping high for those rebounds with two hands and being strong when they come down. And even those jump ball, you know, Ellie, you know, held strong, never gave it up. Rebound, rebound Ava behind the defense is Annie. She gets the pass. She throws it up, just falls off the front of the rim. 
Abby will get the rebound to Ellie, back to Annie. Annie to Abby Ewan. Ellie will tee up a three. No. Good They're offense right now. Both teams are a little bit tired, and it's why they can't make shots. But wow, look at that ball handling there by... It's Tan. Yeah, Tan. Wow, I tell you, this team is skilled. This is impressive. A little flex action here by Belmont. 13 seconds on the shot clock. And Annie his, Harris will get whistled for the foul. That's a floor foul, and uh, that would have been a wide open layup for two. That's the fourth foul of the Spy Ponders. They had one to give. I'd say that's a good foul by Annie. Oh, dynamite. Pump fake, dribble drive to the basket. That is tough to guard. Been stuck on 21-19 for a while. And we're still stuck on 2019. Claire with a rebound, gets it to Ava. 30 seconds left to go in the half. See if Ava can get something going. She struggled so far this game. And Kylie Roan comes from behind, knocks it away, and off of Annie Harrison out of bounds. So Belmont ball, that'll be 25 seconds left to go in the half. They're up 21-19. Spy Potter's got to dig in, dig deep. Every bucket here is huge. Both teams are very tired right now. And that is Kylie Roan misses it. Georgia with the rebound. Eight seconds on the clock, seven. And that is uh, referee Eddie Consilvio with the call there. Foul in the act of shooting was Tan. Is that Eddie Consilvio? Wow. Eric Consilvio was on the, his son was on the first team I ever coached in Arlington years and years and years ago. Eddie Consilvio is a great guy. Eric Consilvio. I don't like him. I, I don't like him right this second. Uh, <laughs> love the sinner, love the sinner, hate the sin. Maybe that's what we're talking about here. Absolutely. Eddie. Uh. Eddie, I don't like the call against the spy punters on principle, but you are a good guy. He's, Eddie's lost some hair over the years as uh, Amy Tan uh, makes, the, uh, makes the second free throw, 22-19, four seconds left to go in the half. One second left, Ellie will deliver, and it will bounce off of the backboard. So we go into the half, folks, with the score, Belmont Marauders 22, Arlington Spy Ponders 19, and uh, Scott, it looked uh, for a while like the second in the second quarter the game might get away, but the Spy Ponders are hanging tough. Hanging really tough. This is very similar to the Woburn game, only I, I don't know what you thought, Rob. I, I think this Belmont team's much, not much better, but, but a much more skilled team than than Woburn. They're, they're very tough. They're very physical, and... They were making plays and ha and have have a, a a plethora of players with skill that I said, geez, this might be a little too overwhelming for the Spy Ponders. What they did is they dug in. Claire Ewan kind of set the tone down low with physical play. Everyone kind of followed her lead. They ran out of gas on the offensive end, but they didn't give up anything on the defensive end. Three points, Ava Connolly. Hasn't given you much in offense. You know that's not going to continue. I like where you're at if you're the Spy Ponders. So a playoff berth at stake. The Ponders need to win one out of three. It is the last home game against the number four in the state, Belmont Marauders. And uh, Spy Ponders are hanging tough with a score of Belmont 22 and Arlington 19. And we will see you in a moment for second half action. My name is Max DeLuca, and if you're interested in pursuing a career in sports media, come on down to Studio B at 892 Mass Ave in Arlington. We are back for second half action with a score, Belmont Marauders 22, Arlington Spy Ponders 19. Run down the scoring here for starters for the Marauders. Uh, Carly Cristofori, number three, has seven points. Uh, Jess Giorgio with six, Megan Tan with uh, four and uh, uh, Jenny Call three, Greta Prop two for the Spy Ponders. Uh, Annie Harris has four, Claire Yoon with four, uh, Abby Yoon with four, Ellie Demery with two, and Ava Connolly with two. So a balanced scoring attack for the Spy Ponders. Nobody really in foul trouble. Uh, nobody for Belmont has two fouls for the Spy Ponders. Uh, Ellie. Uh, Demery Harris, 
Claire Ewan all have one, and Abby Ewan has two fouls. So uh, Scott, a uh, minute nine left to go at halftime, and where are the Belmont Marauders? Well, here they come right now, right on cue, but a little curious right there. Obviously, Melissa Hart knows what she's doing. She's a quality coach, but it's a little bit confusing. They're not even going to warm up for the second half. I guess they like their, their approach to shooting. Don't need any practice. <laughs> Me, myself, I mean, that's just uh, maybe I'm a little old school. Anytime, I, mean, I didn't think they were they were uh, excellent or superior at shooting from the outside. I might have wanted to get a couple practices in there, but hey, to each his own for the Spy yeah. Ponders. Keep that energy and effort up and for Melissa Hart and her club, it's pound the ball inside to Jess Giorgio and Megan Tan and 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 uh, excuse me, uh, Jenny Callie and you know get to work. Well, it's an experienced club, the Marauders. They are starting three seniors and a and a junior in this late season basketball. Both teams are throwing up uh, you know a lot of tricks at the other teams, switching from man to zone, different styles of uh, presses and traps, and so far both teams are handling that aspect of the game very well. We're seeing two teams now who have been preparing for basketball games for over two months. Great point, Rob, about the different defenses and offenses that we've seen. The players are well prepared, they're well trained, they're ready to go, and this is what, this is what makes basketball awesome when you're watching two teams that have spent lots of time training and preparing. This is a fun basketball game, and uh, Spy Ponders will start the second half of the ball down three, and uh, Ava will go to work against number 33, that's Megan Tan. And Tan has done a phenomenal job on Ava so far this game. She's invaded her space, made it difficult for her to dribble drive, and any time you give Ava Connolly trouble on offense, it makes the Spy Ponders just a little bit off kilter. Here comes Krista Forey with the ball. She'll do a little juke at the free throw line, send it over to Tan who drives base. Nice strip by, nice strip by Annie Harrison. That'll be off number 22. That's Greta Prop Ponder's ball. Well, I'll tell you something right now. I'm not sure what Melissa Hart said to her team at halftime, but they came out right now. Right now, they have a they have a pep in their step. The eye of the tiger. They are ready to go, and the Spy Ponders better be ready to match that effort. They're going to be in big trouble. Wow, well, that's a little, that's a little <laughs> big trouble. Or they're going to find themselves maybe in a little bit of a deficit. Certainly not big trouble, but right now the the Marauders are really dialing up their their pressure and effort. Steal that time by Jenny Call. Here come the Marauders. Christopher with the ball. Over to Tan, who kind of holds it into Giorgio. Giorgio will wheel. Send it back out for the jump shot, no. Fight for the ball. Ava can't quite come down with it, but the ball goes out of bounds off Tan. That'll be Ponder's ball. They're down three, 6.49 to go so in the third. So Ava has had a little bit of trouble scoring the basketball tonight, but what she has had trouble with is going for rebounds. She does it every game, all game long, and there she battles for one and ends up being spy Ponder ball because of her effort. And Claire throws it up and in, and the Ponders down by only one, 22-21. Claire stopping and popping after the superior effort by Ava Connolly for a rebound kind of sparked the club, and no, no surprise it's those two getting the job done. Giorgio feeds it to Prop, who can't get it to go. And there is a struggle for the ball, and looks like Paul Katsuba will whistle a spy ponder for the ball for the foul, and he nabs uh, Annie Harris, so the... the the Katsuba pounds down the gavel and says, you. Well, that's no good right there. That's an effort foul. So certainly, even if it's called, that's something Amanda Mortal is not only going to not mind, she's going to enjoy it. That means her team is being physical, and they're battling for those rebounds. So all of a sudden, Belmont has gone, uh, Belmont has gone cold here. They've been stuck at 22 for a long time, and the Spy Ponders can take the lead with a deuce. They're trying to create their offense now by getting deflections and steals. They've gotten a few deflections, but can't get the ball to get in the basket the other side. They'll have a turn here. That's Tan with a layup with the left hand. An easy one, and they get off the dime. 24-21 Marauders. This Tan is the real deal. She's strong, she's physical, and skilled. The whole package. 
and they'll call that off Annie. So just like that, the Marauders will have a chance to stretch their lead to five. Tan is skilled, strong, physical, can shoot. Cristofori, same thing. The big players inside Giorgio, is tough, can rebound, comes from everywhere with his Belmont team. Cristofori with the left, feeds it inside to Prop, who lays it off the backboard and in. 26-21, Belmont. Prop almost says, did you forget about me? I can play too. There she finishes with the left hand on the left side. Coming from everywhere, folks. Potters would like a bucket here. They've been stuck on 21. Pressure defense from Belmont. Claire spins. Into Ava. Ava puts it up with the left hand just off the front of the iron. Claire Ewan swishing in dish, and Ava can't get it to go. She struggled to put the ball in the basket this game. And that time, Carrie Anna's whistled for the foul on, uh, on against Prop, and uh, the Belmont will have a chance to extend their lead to six or seven. No, Rob, I think I'm going to agree with you with Ed Consilvio. I've had it with him. Our long-term friendship has come to an end with that call. <laughs> that was absolute. Yeah, that was a bad call. Horrendous. Uh, you know, what I don't like most about it, if I'm going to say it's a bad call, I need to explain myself. The player wasn't even looking at the basket. Anytime a player is turning and throwing the ball at the basket without looking at it, can't reward them with, with, with free throws unless they, the contact is egregious, and that was not egregious. Contact. Well, it was. I'm not even sure there was contact. It looked like Carrie Ann pulled the chair out from under a uh, prop, and there was a lot of contact right there. As Abby gets stripped with the ball, here comes Christopher. So Belmont is determined to pound the ball inside. Got to get a timeout here. And prop, with, prop with another deuce. Yeah, with another deuce, and they're getting deflections, and what they're doing is they're finishing at the cup. Rob, you mentioned they were having trouble shooting. Big bang, boom, right there. That was Carrie Ann Farina with a left hand underneath. So Farina brings uh, the Spy Ponders to within five and will get rewarded with a free throw. And Farina says, Coach, you're a dope. Why we don't need a timeout? We need to dribble the ball off the court and pass the ball to me, and I'm going to – Laid in with the hoop and the harm, but in the she belt. She says, Coach Zwick, you're a dope. Yeah, you, you bet. She knows your stuff. We've, we've interviewed her a few times. Very verbose. And Carrie Ann gets free throw to go. 28-24, Marauders 420 to go in the third quarter. Big bucket for the Spy Ponders here. Let's see if the Marauders continue to try to pound the ball inside. Rob, you pointed out they were they couldn't shoot from the outside, so they've decided to pound it inside. I think that's what Melissa Hart was talking with her club with at halftime, finding ways to get the ball inside. It's absolutely what she was talking about as Carly Fior, uh, excuse me, Christophori lays it in. She had the open 20-footer, passed it up, and took it to the rack. I don't think Melissa Hart cares how it's done, whether it's a pass or a dribble drive. As long as the shot is taken from five feet and within, she's fine with it. Players have found a way to get, in, get the ball in the hole. Carrie Ann stops and pops, knocked out of her hand over to Claire. Claire, no. Ellie comes down with it. She is uh, she is just mauled underneath, and uh, Amanda Mortelette not happy with that, and for good reason. Ellie tees up a three and gets it to go and draws a harm. Ellie Demery with a chance for a four point play. Ellie Demery says, I don't mind physical play, I don't mind. The game getting amped up that way. I don't care. I, I don't care if I get contacted. Bing, bang, boom. Way out town. Bang. And Demery hits the free throw to bring the Spy Potters to within two. 30-28 Belmont. They just won't go away. Physical play. Questionable calls. They fight through it all. And right now, back within two. Let's see if Belmont tries to get to the rack. And Giorgio gets the rack but doesn't convert. Dan Claire comes down with it. Here comes Ava. Ava gets stripped by Christophori, who puts it between her legs, and she'll come the other way. Ahead to Tan. Tan stops and pops, rolls off the front of the rim. Fast and furious action right now at the Taz. Up and down we go. Ava Connolly turns the ball over, and then at the hoop, Tan can't finish a phenomenal pass by Christophori. Both teams can't find the rim right now. And here's Christophori, 30 to 28, Belmont. 2.35 left to go in the third quarter. Spy Potters need to make an adjustment and make sure they're all sagging off their men because 
Well, right there, I was going to say they're going to shoot from the outside and again prove me wrong. I'm, a, I'm not a Phi Beta Kappa tonight. Nostradamus, you are not. No. Claire has a chance to tie. Swish! Claire Ewan, 30 to 30. Claire Ewan stopping and popping, and as this crowd at a fever pitch, the game is tied at 30. Where would you rather be than right here and right now? And Krista Forey drains a three from way downtown, 33-30 Belmont. Big players make big plays in big games, and there Krista Forey, after a monster bucket by Claire Ewan, steps into a three with poise and confidence and buries it. This Krista Forey is the real deal. Wow. Crowd employing the Spy Ponders to keep on fighting and dig in on defense. Good defensive game for the Spy Ponders against a very potent Belmont attack. Tan goes to the base, goes up, and she lays it up and in and draws a foul from Claire Ewan. That's simply the most spectacular basketball move I've seen in the court this season, bar absolutely none. Crossover, two dribble drives to the basket, finishing through contact. That is absolutely spectacular and unbelievable. Tan doesn't finish with a three-point play. Claire with a rebound. To Ava, to Ellie. I'll tell you, if, they, if the Spy Ponders can get Ava Connolly a bucket, this whole thing is going to turn around because she's the, she's the engine that drives their team, and if she can get one to go, it's going to put a pep in everyone's step. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Ava from way deep touches the rim. No. 35-30 Belmont, minute five to go in the third quarter. See how the Spy Ponders react right now. I mean, it can come from anywhere on the court from any player. This is a tough cover. And Krista Forey, just like that, the senior guard drains another three. That's a heartbreak. 38-30, Belmont. Belmont took one on the chin and then threw a knockout punch in return. This team knows what they're doing. They know how to do it, and they execute under pressure. This is the second eight-point lead of the ball game. Uh, for Belmont, they have 30 seconds left to try to extend it to double digits. Tan is the best player I've seen this year, and Chris Afori might be the second. And if it's possible, I would say that Giorgio might be the third. This team's unbelievably spectacular. Chris Afori's gotten that three-pointer off track for sure. Eight seconds left in the quarter, 41-30 Belmont. Claire with the ball underneath. Ellie for three, and she answers with a swish. Ellie Demarie says, cool down, folks, I got this. And the third quarter ends with the score, Belmont 41, Arlington 33. After seeing that type of a display and a muscle flex by Belmont with the past 10 points they put in, Ellie Demarie able to answer in that fashion. That is a high leverage three-pointer. She steps in with confidence buries it, and I'll tell you, as impressed as I am with this Belmont team, and I'll tell you, I'm impressed with them. I'm equally impressed with Arlington's resilience. 41-33 going in the fourth. They're right here, they're ready to go, and it's gonna take an astonishing effort and execution to beat a team like this Belmont team, but if there's anyone that can do it, it's Spy Ponders. Spy Ponders, uh, the resilience has been tremendous. So it was 30 to, the, so, uh, they've come. They came down from an eight-point deficit to tie the ball game. The uh, Belmont went up again, 30 to 24. Spot, Spy Ponders tied the ball game at 30. Belmont went ahead, 41-30, and then Demarie comes back and hits a big three-point play. This is a heavyweight battle. Both teams throwing haymakers. Neither team is going to go away. Both teams throwing haymakers, and they're connecting on them. On top of that, Belmont decided they're going to come out early in the second half and and pounded in low and dribbled drive to the basket. And then right when I thought that's all they were gonna do, they switched gears and they're bombing away from three-point land. It's come from everywhere with everybody and all types of skill. Belmont with the ball and laying it up and in is Prop. And Prop says, don't forget about me. Maybe I'm the fifth best player in this league. This is astonishing. 
Belmont gets the ball again at 43-33, 7.33 left to go in the game. This is a tough cover for Ellie Demaray. She's doing a phenomenal job. Giorgio to prop, that's canting it up from three, and she hits. 46-33, Belmont pulling away. That's the best player I've seen this year, bar none. And not even a close second. So I believe that uh, Belmont's hit their last five three-point attempts. It's a good shooting team. Oh, they're a good shooting team. They're poised. They have confidence. This is the real deal. 46-33, Belmont. Seven minutes to go in the, in the, in the game. Knocked out by Prop. That'll be spy punter ball. 16 seconds to go on the shot clock. There is no bigger fan of Ava Connolly in the state of Massachusetts than me, period. But she is getting an education tonight on what, where she needs to be moving forward. Tan showing it. Christophori is showing it. They're a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, and they're kind of invading her space and, and, and changing her off her game. I expect her to be be able to compete with that maybe even this year, but right now she's struggling a bit. It's a great, great point, Scott. Bo both these players would be good role models for. Definitely. And uh, Ava Connolly and Diana Wicks. Yep, yep. As well. I mean, I, you, uh, phenomenal uh, observation, Rob, is role models. If you were to pick two players, uh, you know, how you'd want them to comport themselves and the kind of type of skill, that would be two that would be perfect. And I think they can do it and maybe even surpass them in the future. But we're in the now right now, and the spy ponders are right in this. Belmont showing some patience with the ball. Oh, Tan will dribble the base, pull it back out. Wow. Reinitiate the offense. She's She's got some... Uh, High-level moves, doesn't she? It's high-level moves, but on top of that, Rob, the one thing I love about basketball is everyone has a game. Your, uh, his game, her game, yeah. and she has a game. There's a little flair to it. There's a little, it, you can feel it. It's a, it's got a little bit of flair, a little bit of moxie to it. I, I, I could just could not be more impressed with this tan. Spy Potter's game is a team game. Absolutely. And... Uh, Harris, Harris goes up, whistle blows, and that'll be a jump ball call. Ponders will retain p possession. Uh, with the sw uh, spy ponders, there's the players, and then there's the play, and sometimes the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. It's a team with very high-quality girls that have tremendous chemistry. They like each other, and uh, they play very well together. They play phenomenal together, and with the spy ponders, it's a great point that they're kind of a team-oriented you know, uh, the summer grid and the, the parts. And what happens is sometimes when you're facing a team like Belmont with individuals that are so talented, you try to up the team play up and and you can kind of get kind of stuck. And that's where the Spy Ponders are right now. I feel that they're kind of a little bit stuck, not really sure exactly what's going to work. And what's usually going to work is getting back to your basics, moving the ball side to side. Seven seconds ago on the shot clock. Ava's going to have to do something with it. She kicks it back to Annie, who will dribble the rim and can't get it to go. Here comes Christophori. Christophori will pull it back out, throw the ball across the court and out of bounds. Rare mistake there by Christophori. I'll tell you, she can stop on a dime. There she was going about 100 miles an hour. She stopped, threw the ball out of bounds. But I don't know what the deal is with her and the the – the uniform or whatever, but she didn't really start off this game as a player that was that stood out to me at least. And then all of a sudden I'm looking up and I'm saying, look at this player. She's fast, she's quick. And the thing about her and Tan that really stands out that is the strength that is coming with the speed. It, they're, they're, they're strong players with real strong bases. Uh, um, so, you're saying, so you're saying that might have been a little subterfuge uh, by Belmont putting number 12 in the program and sending her out wearing number three. Yeah, and then having her, and then having her kind of hide. For the, for the first six to seven minutes. That's I don't pretty, know. That's, I, I would that's say cunning. Cunning. Yeah. Cunning. <laughs> cunning stratagem. Stratagem by the Marauders. Yeah, I mean, heck, if it works. I mean, yeah, and who knows? I mean, that way we're in there in the second half and, you know, Coach uh, – 
Melissa Hart had something concocted in there. They're going to have somebody with some special secret play that we're going to see later in the game and say, wow, we've never seen that before as the ball flies through the air and into the basket. 46-33, Belmont Marauders 5-49 to go in the ball game. So it's important for the Spy Ponders to keep digging here and try to win this basketball game, but more important to make sure you keep momentum going forward because you've got two huge, ginormous games coming up. Got three games, only got to win one to qualify for the tournament. I wager this will be the best team they play out of the three. No doubt, it could be the best team they play all year. It might be the best team this this freshman team ever faces. This is this is impressive stuff. How the heck did did this Wilburn team beat this team? I I have I no idea. Tape. So. So let's see what happens here. Ellie will stop and pop from 17. No, here comes Belmont. So Woburn's ranked number three in the state. Belmont's ranked number four in the state. Next up on Sunday will be Revere. Revere is ranked number 21 in the state. Well, let's hope these rankings are, are a little bit more correct than the, <laughs> the, the, the four and the three. Because I'll tell you, this four is a lot better than that three. What do you think? Am I off base on that? This, is, this no, team is is a, a step above Woburn, no, in talent and skill? Well, we have the information that um, they played Woburn, it must have been at Woburn, and Woburn came away with a victory. I'm not really seeing how that happened. Uh, 50, they lost 55-58 at Woburn, they did. As Ava tries to throw it off Belmont, Belmont recovers. 46-33 Belmont, 4.26 to go in the ball game. Here comes Krista Forey with it. Finds, oh, and uh, she finds number 21, Jenny Call underneath, who is bumped, and she'll go to the line for two. There's Call, nice little reception from Krista Forey, who's a dynamite passer. She, uh, very much like Ava Connolly, passes the ball a lot with her left hand. We've seen that from her tonight. She's ambidextrous. She's phenomenal and spectacular. I'll tell you, Rob. Yeah, you say you read that score off with the with the Woburn can, and I'm saying, show me the tape, because I'm not going to believe it until I see it. Holy cow. But, did, you know, I'll tell you, Maybe though. Maybe there was ice underneath the court <laughs> that night in, in Woburn and, and, as and, Call hits the and second. And Coach Melissa Hart forgot to bring their skates. That that would explain it. You know, I'll tell you, Coach Mortelette said, really talked about Woburn and said the thing that Woburn's got going for them is they've, they've just been the dominant team in the area for a long period of time. Right. And they've right. got a belief that they can win games, and we saw it against the Spy Ponders when they were late and close. They were able to finish off the Spy Ponders with a tough three-pointer in the corner when a lot of teams might miss that shot because they don't believe it'll go in. So it just shows, goes to show you what belief has to do with a basketball court, and it's something the Spy Ponders can, can learn going forward. Good defense by Claire contesting the, in, the uh, it's not the inbounds pass, but the pass into Giorgio. And uh, Annie Harris has whistled for the foul. That's the fifth on the Spy Ponders, the third on Harris, who will sit down. And Michelle Mahoney comes into the ball game. 48-33 Belmont as uh, Giorgio puts it off the glass. Mahoney tips it away, but Tan comes out with it. Well, you see Giorgio missing there for the first five minutes of the game. She looked like the best player in the court. And you got to hand it to the Spy Ponders. Claire Ewan, Abby Ewan. Annie Harris, they've done a phenomenal job shutting her down the, the, this game up to this point. You see there another deflection. They're just, not, they're just not letting her get anything done inside. So this is the, uh, in all likelihood, the last uh, home game of the year for this Arlington uh, Spy Ponders. And as uh, it looks like Prop gets it to go 50-33 Belmont. It's the last home game of the year for the Spy Ponders. We actually had senior night last uh, Tuesday to accommodate uh, the schedule of one of the the parents, but it's been an exciting year, and a lot was uh, a lot was shown, and uh, some exciting times on this court, and a lot was learned by the young uh, freshmen who will go forward. Of all my years participating in coaching, commentating the game of basketball, this will rank as one of my favorite of all time. No this question. was a revelation. To me, I just this, this I did not did not expect this level of skill, enthusiasm, effort, and desire from 
from the girls game. I just haven't been around it for, for quite some time. And, and they, they've just shown me and inspired me with their play. And it's not just the Spy Ponders, it's the league in general. I love it and I've just enjoyed it thoroughly. I know you have too. John Wooden at the end of his, towards the end of his life said that he only watched uh, women's basketball yeah. because women's basketball was the style of basketball. They put women played the game the way he thought it ought to be played. And uh, after, you know, kind of living this season with the Spy Ponders, I, I, I fully understand finally and certainly agree with John Wooden. I, it, I, it's a wonderful way to put it and, and put it in context. You know, it's, been a revelation and and y you see the spy ponders i believe they have exceptional ball movement for this league but this league in general the ball movement is outstanding it moves side to side it doesn't stick the players are generally astonishingly unselfish and it's really kind of appropriate even though the spy ponders are on the wrong end of this that the last game we get to see is this Belmont team. Because you know what, Rob? I think you really hit the key. This might be the Spy Ponder team in a few years down yeah. the line. You can see Claire Ewan maybe being just uh, uh, Giorgio. You could see maybe... Uh, um, Diana Wicks is is uh, Krista Ford. Exactly. Yeah. And, and Ava Connolly is kind of a... Um, uh, Tan. Uh, Megan Tan, and yeah. you can kind of see it, and that's not. And certainly, we're doing no, no. Hopefully, no one thinks we're disrespecting our seniors. Staff. We love our seniors; they're they're awesome, and and they've been special, and they're going to be special. And I, I believe in my heart, this team is going to make the tournament. But you know, we may be getting a peek at the future of the Spy Ponders. Our seniors are special, and when I when I think of uh, our seniors, I think of a couple things. One. Uh, as Belmont's up 50 to 33, it was 232 here, and Cristofori uh, throws the ball off the backboard, and uh, Giorgio swoops in with, with with the foul. How about that four point? Pl oh wait, wait, I'm going to have something to say here. Please tell me that was on Giorgio, and it is. Um, <laughs> that, uh, this is this is not a time to start yeah, complaining yeah, about the officials, you know, is it? I, I got my problems with uh, Ed and Sylvia, but we're not, we're, Rob, we're not going to run down and beat him up. So, <laughs> right. I was going to charge the court <laughs> if that was on us. I had my partner. hand on you. Yeah, right. Stay right. right here, partner. I like doing this work. How about that four-point play by uh, Ellie Demarie tonight to tie the game at uh, third at thirty? Wow. Hey, honestly, Rob, I kind of. I, I I'm not I truly am not someone who believes in moral victories and certainly getting you know getting beat by 17 with 156 there's nothing to really write home about but to, to see that they had this team tied at 33 says you know you could do some damage in this tournament and and, and definitely get a win against Revere or Bill Rick and Lincoln Sudbury in the final game it can be done if you can play this team with 33 33 all tie in the second half you can play with anyone in the state. Because, well, well, I'm not sure this Belmont team is the best team in this state. They're certainly among them. And we thought that way when Woburn came in, and a lot of resilience was shown by the punter. And the punter's overtime game, was that, uh, was that Stone? Redding. Well, well, against Redding, uh, 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 light, light body. Well, light body. So the, the punters in the fourth quarter uh, came all the way back to send uh, the, the game in overtime against the Redding Rockets. So this is a tough, resilient team that, you know, can't be counted out against anybody. And, and, uh, and they're shooting the ball uh, a, a little bit, you know, pretty well last game. And this game is Ava Connolly uh, makes the first of two. It's good to see Ava Connolly getting on the board. She struggled a lot offensively, and, and you six can points tonight. And you can just see that 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 the, anytime Ava Connolly misses a free throw, it means she's not mentally right, or she may be physically not right, because there's no one that's trying harder to get things going right than Ava Connolly. And when she's missing free throws, something just is not right. And Ava Connolly right on cue, drives into the lane, throws it up but with her left hand, draws contact and has a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. And that's what I love about Ava Connolly. Here we are saying she's struggling. She can't get over the hump. And right there, a dynamite strong move to the hoop and a little smile to Boo, which I'd like to see a little more of, Ava, because she brings such joy to us in the stands. I'd like to see her. To, and 
she gets a big hand and well deserved. I'm clapping up here. What a year for Ava Connolly, huh, Rob? Great year for great year for Ava Connolly and and uh, really all the uh, all the freshmen. It'll be a good learning experience. Uh, you know, speaking of learning, going on the road now um, to try to pick up the win. 52-37. What you can do when you go on the road here is kind of learn from Woburn and learn from Belmont. You know, Bel they, what they did is both teams, they dialed things up. They put, they brought things to a fever pitch. Great point. And yeah. when they brought it to a fever pitch, at times, Arlington struggled. But they eventually matched it, you know, both times. So now, it's just, instead of matching it, you've got to be there. You got to be that team that dials that, it up. They're the one. They match your fever pitch. You don't match theirs. And when they get to that point, that's when they're going to really get over the hump, and that's when you're going to see special things happen, and spe more special things. Because I think special things have already happened this year. Another deep three by Krista Flory. That's her third, uh, fourth of the second half as she comes up with a steal. Holy cow! That is uh, 21 points for Krista Flory. It's number I mean, 11, Ali uh, Shapazian tries to get in on the act. This Krista Flory is the real deal. I'm, I'm not seeing things right. This is this is this is legit. She's a le you know she's a legit uh, college level talent. Now I, I don't know much about the the kind of the w women's game at the college level to make a make a prediction, but she's got all the skills as she drains another one. That's her. 24th point, her fifth three-pointer of the, of the second half, and uh, she didn't miss in the second half. Unbelievable. And that'll be the that'll be the final score, um, and it will be Belmont Marauders uh, 58, the Arlington Spy Ponders 37. I will say it felt a little closer than that, though, didn't it? I mean, Belmont kind of ran away with it in the in the uh, fourth quarter, but the game was uh, the game was tied at 30. And, uh, you know, deep in the third, uh, Belmont was just uh, too experienced, too much, too tough. Too experienced, too much, too tough. And I think, you know, at the end, the kind of the pulling away is Melissa Hart. What we're seeing here in these games is we're seeing teams try to take momentum from one game into the next. We saw the Spy Ponders do it with Woburn, and then they went up and got a big win at Lexington. And so that's what I think, honestly, you're seeing there at the end with Melissa Hart's club. They're going to try to get something going to keep going for the next game. To try to keep momentum going. They're not trying to pile. I don't. They're not trying to. I didn't, no. I don't, they're trying to no. run, run a score up or no. embarrass anyone. No. They're trying to keep momentum going. They're playing well. So this game was tied at 33, and Melissa's Hart team was faced with a challenge, and they answered the challenge, and good for them. And so now they're going to try to get some some momentum going. Well, you know, win, lose, or draw for the for the uh, Spy Ponders. I you know I think that this. I personally think that this Belmont team might have a shot. Uh, at the uh, at this at this state title for uh, Division One, Division One North, uh, on top of them at the standings is Masconomet, uh, who we haven't seen. Masconomet. Masconomet. <laughs> uh, Rob, Cal California boy. Yeah, I was say, where were you born again? <laughs> I, I sense left coast. <laughs> left coast, exactly. Uh, C Central Catholic. I think I got that right. We haven't <laughs> seen those two teams, but we have seen the Woburn Tanners, and um, you know, I I I would. Uh, have have a wager to place on that game on a neutral court after seeing both those teams. So this uh, this this Belmont team could do some damage. Yeah, I tell you they could. I got a minus 150 to win the whole thing, and you know uh, Masco. That's what we we Massachusetts call them Masco. That's not normally a very strong uh, conference. So. What I would say, really, what you're looking at here is Woburn, Central Catholic, Belmont, Revere, and Everett. And think about the Spy Ponders here. So they're playing. If if we were to say that these are the the four top clubs, they're going to play three of them within a month. Yeah, yeah. And they go on to play Revere uh, on Sunday, and Revere is 13 and four. And then they'll play the winner of uh, Bill Ricca or Lincoln Sudbury. L Lincoln uh, Lincoln Sudbury. Okay, so uh, Scott, I'm gonna I'm gonna saddle you with the tough task of picking the player of the game for the uh, Belmont uh, Marauders, and you're gonna you're gonna have to think hard about that. It's not an enviable task. We have a lot of talent to choose from. We sure do, and at the end of the day, 
it, it's it's got to be Megan Tan. It, as, as impressive as Kali Cristofori was burying the threes in the second half, not missing, way downtown, bang, dribble drives and penetrations and dishes, switching and dishing. This Tan showed skill and dexterity that I have not seen on a high school basketball court for the girls, as simple as that. And so she gets my player of the game. She turned the game around with a couple of really dynamic and strong moves to the basket, hit from the outside. She's the real deal, the whole package. Best player I've seen in the Middlesex League this year, Megan Tan. Megan Tan, and I don't know, I don't know the player of the game uh, rules if the MIAA has uh, sanctioned me to disagree with you. I won't so, so much as disagree. I might even want to call co-players of the game. Uh, and, uh, you know, Me Megan Tan kind of gave way to Carly Christofori there in the fourth quarter with five big threes. That's, uh, that's, a, t that's a tough call. But Megan Tan it is. And, uh, yeah, well, it's a, you know, honestly, Rob, hey, this is, uh, this is not uh, – this is a uh, merit meritocracy up here, buddy. So let's go let's, – let's give it to both of them. I think they earned it. I really do. Yeah, I think I they really, earned it. Honestly, I, what, do you, what do you think about me saying, me saying that I think Megan Tan's the best player I've seen in the league this year, and I think Carly Christofori is the second best? Yeah. Do you think I'm off base there, that, that I'm, that I'm off the, wandering off the reservation? I, from what from what we saw tonight, I, I, it's a close call. I would have to agree. I would have to agree with you. I'd want to uh, see him play a few more games right. to uh, you know to finally opine on that. But you know what a what a one two punch oh. for uh, <laughs> co Coach Melissa Hart, <laughs> right? Unbelievable. And uh, Megan Tan is a junior, and Christofori is a senior. So while you think about the Bing Bang. Uh, boom award, uh, very balanced scoring attack tonight for the Spy Ponders. Carrie Ann had three, Abby Ewan four, Annie Harris with uh, four, Claire Ewan with eight, Ava Connolly with nine, and Ellie Demery with uh, nine. I want to credit uh, specifically the Spy Ponders kind of guts and resilience hanging in into uh, this game against such a quality club. And I specifically want to call out Ellie Demery for the big four-point play, showing senior leadership at a time that looked to be very clutch. Um, you know, I, 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 I defy you, it, uh, boys, girls, men, women, any level of basketball, to see a uh, shot that's more clutch than Ellie Demery's four-point play. And I'm going to give her the ACMI player of the game. So that leaves the Bing Bang Boom Award, and to me, it really is a no-brainer, and it's Abby Ewan. I thought Abby Ewan was spectacular tonight. Her effort was sensational. She showed senior leadership anytime they were, they were in trouble. She was taking the ball strong to the hole. She got a hoop and a harm once, free throws another time, answered the bell. She yeah, I was talking to Coach Amanda Mortelette. Before, we were talking to Coach Amanda Mortelette before the game, Robin. You know, she was saying that, you know, she's just pointing out that Abby is undersized every single game. Every single game she's undersized down low as, as a four and a five on this team. And we don't really mention or see it because it doesn't look like she is. She doesn't play undersized. Right. And so, you know, she's getting moved off her space, and sometimes she drops a ball here and there. But that's why, because there's bigger players – push you know that are able to to, to to move her body and and she doesn't back down she's tough hangs in there so Abby Ewan gives my big bang boom I have a question for you Scott we don't keep rebounding stats do you believe there's a game on this court where the ponders have been out rebounded no I'm not sure they have no no and tonight was not one of them yeah that was absolutely not one of them yeah and so we looked when you do look to the future that's where Claire comes comes into my I mean she gobbles rebounds it's really astonishing she if when you watch these broadcasts if you go back and watch them I I, I, ch I challenge young players and people who just love basketball to just watch Claire you and box out now the whole team is, boxes out uh, with with very high acumen but Claire Ewan is obsessed with it she finds her player, she dives her body into him, and turns around for the basketball. It's a clinic. It's an absolute clinic, and that's why she gets rebounds, and that's why they get rebounds. How many rebounds did Ava Connolly have tonight? Five, six? 
And, this is your point guard and on, in there. and on top of that, tipping the ball out to other players so they can get the rebound. Right. So the, you, it's, and it's team effort. They're going after the basketball. They're trying to get the basketball. It doesn't matter how. If Anna Connolly tips it, she tips it. If, if, it, if it's Claire, she's grabbing it. If it's Allie, she's grabbing it. But the, they're trying to get the rebound. And no, I, I mean, do, do you agree? I that's don't think they've been rebounded once this year. 100%. So, uh, you know, for a team that's outside, they are mighty. And that's one of the things that inspires us so much about this Spy Ponders team. And that was some coaching from the coach, Scott Zwick. And now the Ponders will go on the road. They have two to win one. They will have to face the 13-4 uh, uh, and four Revere or Bill Recca or Lincoln uh, Sudbury. They'll play Sunday and Monday. Uh, at 11 a.m. or 3:30 p.m. and 11 a.m. on just so, so, so 11 a.m. on Sunday probably going to air before so Sunday it's Revere okay at Revere and it's 11 a.m. and then Monday it's 11 a.m. I believe it, it says or 3:30 I believe it's 11 a.m. again and there you have it. So we will, uh, with that, uh, invite you to watch the post-game show. And we will sign off uh, for now. For my partner, Scott Zwick, I'm Rob Anthony. And the final score, Belmont Marauders 58, Arlington Spy Ponders 37. Going live in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. And welcome to the ACMI post game show. We're here with senior captain and the ACMI player of the game, Ellie Demaray. And Ellie, that's a really good Belmont team. Tell me about what it was like facing a team of that quality. Yeah, Belmont is definitely one of the stronger teams that we face. They play with a lot of energy and they're very deep on the bench. So it's always fun competing against them and playing with them. So. Well, my partner Rob likes to say to, to be the best, you have to beat the best. And so you've had games with Woburn, and top team in the state, now with Belmont. How's that going to prepare you for these two big games coming up? Um, it definitely prepares us well. Our league is very strong, and if we keep playing with this energy into our tournament, I think it'll go really well and we'll really, like, scare a lot of teams. I think you will, and so we, we were also commenting that you know, this is the last home game, and we've really enjoyed watching you play, and and we, we kind of sense up here, you know, we're not, obviously not around the team, uh, that this is a close-knit group. Is it, is it, are we sensing it correctly? Yeah, it's definitely a very close-knit team. We spend a lot of time together outside of the gym and outside of practice, which is always really fun when you really love your teammates, so... That's great, and so we've had a, a, a wonderful experience covering you. Hopefully, you win, win one of the next two and, and get a playoff game, and who knows what will happen. Maybe we want to be back at home. So congratulations on a great season. Thank you. All right, so we'll be back right after this. Hi, welcome to the 19th program in the Art and Arlington series. Foodlink serves people in need in Arlington and the surrounding communities. We partner with 12 local grocery and prepared food stores. edX launched their MicroMasters program as an opportunity for students around the world. Again, this is Nicole with you. I'm your host, Nicole Samako. And we going to talk to Ashley. And then you will run to the devil himself from the sight of a gun. Down, down, blue and brown, the leaves are falling to the ground. Uh, the Schwams specialized in here starting back in the 1860s. A customer comes in, tells us what he or she wants. Welcome to this episode of Songs of Hope and Tolerance. Start hell with one open dollar. Camel with a man and a one mean other. Hi, I'm Susan Karp, the Executive Director of the Arlington Council on Aging. We're located in Arlington, Massachusetts. And welcome to A Books Review. I'm your host, Alistair Book. 
And Rob Anthony here with Com Coach Amanda Mortelet. And uh, Coach, thanks for joining us. And uh, I want to start with three words about the Belmont Marauders. W-O-W. -W. That was a good basketball team you played tonight. Yeah, I mean, we knew going in you know, um, that they're a tough team. You know, I think that clinched the league championship for them tonight. Um, you know, they're just really strong at every position. I thought we played them really tough um, for a lot of the game. But, but they are one of the better teams that, that we'll face. So. So 58-37, the, the game was actually closer than that for most of the game, and you tied the uh, game at 30. Uh, you, the Spy Ponders were very re resilient tonight. You had to have been pleased with what you saw. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I think our defense was, was really there tonight. The first time we played them, we didn't play great defense against them. You know, for those first two and a half quarters, our defense was really well. We kind of let a shooter get away from us a little bit, and she hit some big shots. Uh, you know, and, and we let her get hot. I don't think she's hit – she hit six threes. I don't think she's hit that many all, in, in a game all season. So, you know, kudos to them, though. They played hard, too. And uh, before the game, you were, when we spoke, you were a little bit worried about uh, Jess Giorgio, their post player, and uh, Claire Ewan certainly did a very nice job battling against Jess. Yeah, I think for sure, you know, Claire's, you can really see how she's grown from the beginning of the year until now, and she's, I mean, her defense was tremendous tonight. And, you know, I think a little bit we've shifted Abby to a wing, you know, since, mm -hmm. since Diana's been out and Abby's been playing more of a wing, and that puts Claire on a, on a bigger uh, matchup underneath. And I think Claire did tremendous under there tonight. So this was your last uh, home game of the, of, the, of the season. Any reflections on uh, home court this season? Um, yeah, I think, you know, one, the girls play tough here. It's, it's nice to, to play at home. You know, I love I love this gym. Um, I think, you know, we don't have, we don't fill the gym. I think the fans we have are pretty loyal. The parents, they're an amazing group of parents and just, just really supportive. Um, you know, Arlington's a great community for that. Great. And so now uh, games Sunday and Monday. Uh, Sunday will be Revere. Monday will be the winner of Lincoln Sudbury against Bill Ricca, and you got to get one. Yep. So, you know, I think what's important for us is not to let that pressure get to us, kind of, and just go out and play our game and have fun and move the basketball and run a little bit. Um, you know, Revere's a tough – every game we're going to play is a tough game, but I think that's what we wanted at this point is to get us ready for tournament. So we play a tough game, you know, come away with a W, and that, that gets us ready for tournament. I think we're playing pretty well now. We just got to, you know, convert that to a W. Okay, good game tonight, Coach, and uh, good luck Sunday and Monday. And that'll be it from the Taz. Rob Anthony for my partner, Scott Zwick, with a final score. Belmont 58, Arlington 37.